Hey everyone, today we've got all three styles of intake manifolds and let's see about putting some numbers on them. Um, you know, we've got the, uh, the favorite number two here, but let's quantify exactly how much that is. Before we get into any dyno runs, let's talk about the differences. Specifically first is gonna be the identification difference. So the number one comes out a little bit straighter, but the big difference here is you can see it's smooth right here versus the number two, it's got a crease right here. The number three has this rib back here. Now it's important to note, this there's more than just one part number for this thing because you see how there's one outlet here. This one here has two outlets. Um, I think all three manifolds have those two different options and there's a couple different minor variations, but really it's one, two, three. And, and that's really the only differences that matter. You might need an extra cap or something depending which one you get. Um, specifically, I think the Venza one that is a number two doesn't have this extra cap here if you're looking for that extra clean look, but they didn't make a whole lot of 2GR Venzas, so good luck with that. Um, yeah, so we've got a number two already sitting in the car. That's the, uh, the, the old standby. We know that that one makes a little bit more power, but let's talk about exactly how much, because these things, it used to be worth getting because they were easy to get, but now they're getting more and more expensive all the time. So let's see what it makes. This is essentially our gold standard. Interestingly, the dyno decided to pick a goldish kind of color. Um, this is with a number two. We got 297.77, and let's call that 268 foot pounds of torque. All right, let's switch over to the number one intake and see what happens. And now we've got the number one manifold. You can see smooth right here. Everything else is the same. So let's see about dyno running that. It made more power everywhere. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, to be fair, I've been saying that the number one is not worth changing out for a number two. So, I mean, even down here, look at the- Yeah, no, it literally made more power everywhere. I mean, that's dyno startup, that doesn't count. Um, all right, but this is the first run. And they do kind of equalize after a while. So let's do three runs and see where they land. But this is interesting. <laughs> if you remember, the number two is the one that was in the middle there. The number one, and this is why I keep saying, if you've got a number one, it's not worth going to a number two. There's really, there's no difference. I mean, yes, if you want to split hairs, technically on this run, the number one made actually even less than one horsepower more, but it's, it's not. These are, these are the same. So let's go ahead and swap in the number three and uh, see what that is. That's got some more interesting differences. All right, and now, as you can see, we've got the number three intake. 
And as with the other ones, I'm going to do a couple runs just to kind of get a get the best thing we can get off of it, and uh, then then we'll talk about it. <laughs> So I did four pulls. Um, the red one is the, the number two. And you can see, right? So the number three here, these ended up being good runs for the number three. And we're missing a little bit here. You know, it, we might actually be gaining a little bit here. It's sometimes missing, you know, it, we can take, but this isn't the problem with number three. The problem with number three, let me put an insert here. This is from uh, Alex's dyno testing, and I've seen this repeated over and over. It just doesn't seem to be doing it with this exact one today. But essentially, there's a big dip right here. And what's happening there, um, let's go over here. What's happening there is the uh, variable intake runner length valve it seems that on the number three, it doesn't handle the switch over sometimes. Sometimes there's just too much air pressure and it doesn't actually switch. So if what you have is a number three, you're almost better off doing that. And by the way, for some reason, this actually doesn't throw a fault code if you have that disconnected. Um, and let's actually do some dyno runs. Doing this will lose you a little bit of bottom end, but it's not a ton. So let's actually do that and show you. With those runs um, I did three runs but I picked the uh, the best one there this gives you a representative idea with the number three with that connector unplugged um, it lost a little top end and it doesn't always lose this but that's that's the thing is number three is just not consistent but this here when you have that unplugged this is consistent that's the TVIS disconnect loss um, and right here right around 4400 rpm is where it switches so it's a little ironic because we use the Sienna ECUs. Those are the ones that I, uh, that I adjust. And this is, right now, if you go to my website and you buy it, that's what you're buying right there, that uh, 298.74 horsepower. Your mileage, ex your horsepower may vary a little bit, but this is, that's what's available right now. So I would avoid the number three. I think we've confirmed that. But number one, number two, I wouldn't really, wouldn't really bother. It's not worth it. And if you do have the number three, disconnect the solenoid. It'll, it'll cost you this, but it'll cost you a lot less up here. And it's going to be at least consistent because this, this drop here, that's like, oh, something like a 30 or 40 foot pound drop. That's not predictable. So you definitely don't want that. So I think that's it for this testing. And uh, hopefully you guys learned something. We'll uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.